Hello, BookTube. Well, I'm down here in what I used to call poppy territory. I was fishing around for a particular thing on a bottom bookshelf of a random bookcase here at Hyde Cottage when it suddenly occurred to me uh, that I could take you along <laughs> when I did this. Uh, there's, there's still thousands of books to cover in my so far aborted 2023 library tour. I will get back to it. Uh, but I figured while I was down here, I might as well. And what, then when I start up the library tour again proper, I will just cover all of these random shelves all over again. So let's see what we have here. Because it never hurts to talk about books on a, a dodgy, blotchy, rainy day. Now does it? Uh, this first one is by uh, J. Brian III and Charles J. V. Murphy. I, I never remember that stupid mouthful, but this is the Windsor story. A hardcover of their book about the abdication crisis and the, the infamous subsequent life of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. And despite... Uh, the wordiness of the collaboration here. Just come up with one name. Just make up one name, John Smith. <laughs> okay, but uh, it, this is really, really good. It is one of the best accounts of that whole story that I've ever read. <laughs> then we have this huge thing. This is from Oxford University Press from, uh, oh God, years ago. When did this come out? Probably 10 years ago. Uh, 2006. So longer than 10 years ago. This is by Philip Waller. It's a great huge thing called Writers, Readers, and Reputations, Literary Life in Britain from 1870 to 1918. Uh, and it's terrific. Just terrific. Just full of all sorts of readerly stuff about where people got their book recommendations, where they read reviews, where the books were, how they got the books just in general, what they paid for them, and on what kind of installment plans. From everything from marginalia that has been recovered all the way to publishing giants. Just exactly the sort of thing that I love. Uh, okay, this is another one is exactly the sort of thing that I love. This is Aviva Gottlieb Zornberg's book, The Beginning of Desire lovely trade paperback that is just a big wide-ranging work of biblical exegesis it's just the, the author going through various key stories from uh, mostly the old testament and reading into them reading what they are but the author has such a, a tremendously poetic insight that i i just it's i've read a million volumes like this but this is one of the only ones i've actually kept uh what is this next one it's in rather ragged shape oh okay this is from this is very old this is from uh are you even going to tell me this is from well over a century ago a uh, very old book let's see if we can get a date on this if we move the onion skin uh um no doesn't seem to have a date on it but this is the rowan poets of the augustan age by w y seller it's this crappy condition thing that I probably got at the Brattle, you know, eons ago. Uh, the main reason that I have this thing, or that I had it for a long time, was that the long essay on Horace is really good in here, as is the there's a uh, long essay on uh, uh, yeah, this is mostly about Horace, but there's there's a lot of good stuff in here on Ovid, and also a really really knowledgeable section on the Roman poet Propertius, who I love, but who isn't really known or discussed anymore. Uh, oh, okay, then I've made my, I've made no secret on this channel of my affection for these things. I don't see enough of them. These, there were, you know, a century ago, there were gigantic magazines that strode the landscape, and they had millions of subscribers. They sold like magazines today could only dream of. And, uh, over time, their popularity led to them being bound in hardcover editions for libraries. And this is one from McClure's magazine from 1910 that has, it has all the different kinds of things. So original artwork, lots of original fiction, original poetry, uh, but also lots and lots of nonfiction stuff as well. And 1910, of course, is going to be a key year for me. Of course, I'm going to want McClure's from that year. Uh, this next one looks like a review copy. Oh yeah, this is, this is a review copy from, uh, this year from May. <laughs> what on earth is this doing down here? This should be up on the workshelf. Oh no, from 2022. Okay, so this came out a year ago. This is Mark Hume's book, Reading the Water on fly fishing. Uh, and it's just, it's a review copy that's just sitting down here from 2022. I wonder if this is the same thing. Is this the same thing? No, this is a review copy from 2018. 
uh, a, a reprint. We must have seen these on this channel. I keep I always forget how old this channel is now. This is by William Claver and Philip Mel Melanson, and it's called Shadow Play, uh, the, a reprint of a classic investigation into the assassination of uh, Robert Kennedy and whether or not anything that we actually know about that assassination is accurate, <laughs> whether or not any of the, the standard pat narrative, whether or not any of that is actually true. Uh, okay, then we have a, uh, a booktube anthology. Uh, what have we got here? This is a, a booktube anthology called, a horror tube anthology called Local Haunts. A terrific, uh, the, I believe this was the first horror tube anthology that I, I've been involved in a couple of the others, but this was the first one. Lots of local stuff by booktubers who you know. Uh, okay, then sitting down here, we have another copy of something that we saw in the little book room. This is a Wyman Richardson's book, The House on Nosset Marsh, an old Cape Cod book that is just, just wonderful. It has illustrations, spot illustrations and full page illustrations uh, by Henry Bugby Keane. Just one of the great uh, location books of all time. Uh, what is this next one that's oversized? Oh, okay. This is John Boswell's book, Christianity, Social Tolerance, and Homosexuality, which is a subtitle. I know this has a subtitle, a huge subtitle, but really that is a subtitle. This should have an actual title, but uh, this is a story of a, a really sweeping story of what Christian, what homosexuality was like in the ancient world, how people thought about it, how it was practiced, how it was penalized or written about or whatnot by our author who was, if I remember correctly, very young when this came out. Does this have a picture of our author with his shirt unbuttoned down to his navel? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Oh, that's a shame. Well, maybe you could look him up online. Uh, oh, but this was really, really good. Really, uh, if you're interested in reading the history of homosexuality, then it's, it's key to read. Uh, this also looks like a new book. Oh, yeah, this is from 2022. This is edited by Julian Zelzer. And this is the presidency of Donald Trump, a first historical assessment. And it's worthless. I don't know why it's on the shelf instead of in the garbage. It's worthless. This talks about uh, Trump's mindless attacks on NATO, his mindless attacks on immigrants, his mindless attacks on Muslims, his mindless attacks on women, uh, his mindless attacks on the U.S. economy, etc., 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 etc. It's built to be like history's first draft, the first look at what the presidency of Donald Trump actually meant. But it came to press. It came to the publication uh, before Donald Trump organized and incited a violent insurrection to overthrow the United States government and install himself in power illegally after the execution of his vice president, presumably for the rest of his life. That is a deal breaker. That is a, a scene changer. No one should care what his policies were uh, regarding trade tariffs with China. <laughs> no American should care about that. I would argue that no one in the world should care about that because uh, as I've pointed out gently in the past, no matter where you live in the world, you are within range of the American nuclear arsenal, and no matter where you live in the world, you are a 20-minute bike ride from a multi-million dollar American military installation. If you thought that that felt a little bit uneven and powerless under your feet when Donald Trump was president and had guardrails, imagine what it would feel like if he was dictator of the United States and kind of maybe liked your country, maybe liked the look of it, maybe liked to own it. Uh, but it doesn't. It ultimately doesn't matter because this any assessment of Donald Trump's presidency stops and starts with the fact that he's the only person in American history to ever try to overthrow the government uh, and establish himself as a dictator. He wasn't trying to establish a fair election. He knew the election was fair. He was just trying to take power, third world style. He was just trying to take power. And this book doesn't even have that. It has all the rest of it, but who cares? The rest of it is totally irrelevant. Uh, the rest of it could apply to any other American president. Only one thing applies to only this one president, and that's that he tried to overthrow the government, tried to execute his vice president, invalidate the will of 80 million voters, and install himself illegally in power, presumably until he dies. Uh, if you're not, if that's not in your book, an assessment of the presidency of Donald Trump, then your assessment of the presidency of Donald Trump is at least fatally outdated. Uh, anyway, <laughs> oh, okay. This is another one. I think this came out this year. Did it? Uh, that choking sound that you hear off camera is my little dog who can't stand the fact that I'm 10 feet away from her. She, yeah, so whenever I am, whether it's in the little book room or over here, you're, you're going to hear that choking sound because she can't stand the fact that I'm over here. <laughs> anyway, 
This is Sarah Dixwell Brown. This is regicide in the family, finding John Duell. Finding John, John Dixwell, who's an ancestor of the author, and who was one of the people who uh, killed King Charles. Uh, Self-published thing, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> Frida, Frida, settle down over there. Hey, little baby, I'll be right with you. Uh, let's see here. What, what is this next one? Okay, this is uh, also from 2022. I guess some 2022 books ended up on this weird shelf. This is uh, by John Marshall. This is Clash, Presidents and Press in a Time of Crisis. Uh, all about the relationships between mostly modern presidents and the U.S. press. Uh, again, taking all of its impulse, all of its main impetus from the fact that President Donald Trump referred to the U.S. press as the enemy of the people and incited his followers at rallies and elsewhere to physically attack members of the press. I'm calling them the enemy of the people, and if you attack them, I'll be okay with that. Physically attack them. Uh, there are other presidents in this book, but no other president ever did that. No other president ever thought about doing that. So, <laughs> anyway... Uh, Oh, all right. Then we have a battered copy of, oh boy, oh boy, a battered copy of uh, uh, The Black Arrow by Robert Louis Stevenson with the N.C. Wyeth cover. This thing was falling apart when I got it. I have a better edition of this now, but I, I have this sort of sitting here uh, just because I haven't got rid of it, I guess. Frida, settle down. Just choking and thrashing over there because I'm not with her. Uh, then from a, a, an advanced copy from 2020, this is a collection of short stories called Cool for America by Andrew Martin. Uh, what it's doing down here, I have no idea. <laughs> I have a finished copy of Andrew Martin's book. So uh, Then we have a big battered copy of Kenneth Clark's Civilization, his uh, big, well-illustrated survey of Western history. Uh, this is in rather rotten, rather ragged shape because I hadn't seen it in years and I was kind of hankering for it. I, I once loved reading it. And then I found this copy and I reinforced the dust jacket and shored up the binding and whatnot. And then no sooner did I do that than I found a perfect copy at the Brattle. This thing will never be reprinted. But I found a perfect copy at the Brattle and just grabbed that. So I have to have two. Uh, Let's see. Oh, great. Oh, fantastic. This I don't have a date on this, but this is uh, Princeton University Press, Turtles of the World. This is a visual guide to every family of turtles uh, with lots and lots of beautiful illustrations all throughout and uh, breakdowns of you know their scientific designations and whatnot. Uh, then we have an advanced copy of... Uh, when did this come out? 2021. This is Will McPhail's graphic novel, In... I got. I eventually got the finished copy of this thing, but I can't recommend this strongly enough. This graphic novel doesn't have any Kryptonians in it, but I recommend it anyway. Uh, it's just wonderful, just incredibly touching. Uh, oh, then we have James Packer's book, The Form of Trajan in Rome. Oversized thing here, uh, with a great look at that. Great artistic reconstructions of what the form was like. The just gigantic form that Trajan carved out of. Uh, a hill, a hillside in Rome. Look at that. How wonderful. Uh, this had a brief vogue of notoriety in the critical press. People noticed how, how really good it was and wrote about it. I don't know if you can hear that. We've got a little dog thrashing around, and we've got torrential rain slapping against the window. So I'm, I'm losing the light here. We've got a few more books to go, though. Uh, here is National Geographic. This is the photo arc, which is a, a thing that was put together by Joel Sartori of... Uh, in-studio, high-definition, really good, charismatic photos of animals in the world. Instead of going into the wild, he had the, he arranged somehow to have a lot of them brought into the studio for pictures. Really is an amazing thing to look at. The original volume was called The Photo Arc, and it is an amazing thing to spend time with. And there have been a lot of sequels uh, since then. And this is one of them, Vanishing. The most heartbreaking of them all, because this is picture after picture of animals that are effectively extinct. We get their their relative numbers, how how endangered they are. Just incredible stuff. I, I have I have had a number of books like this, sort of uh, rogues galleries of, of rundowns of who's extinct or who's closest to the edge, but nothing appears to this. Uh, okay, then we have a bound galley from Oxford University Press. 
This is by Cameron Blevins, and it is Paper Trails, the U.S. Post, and State Power in the American West. Uh, I don't have a date on this because I don't have any information stuck into this. This is just uh, the pages of the book that somebody just bound at the copy shop. No idea. I don't remember liking it all that much. I mean, I thought it was competently done, but it didn't jump out at me. I, I don't know why I have it here, uh, but I do. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not understanding a lot of what I'm seeing on this shelf. Then we have a history of uh, the early history of the Saturday Club. This is from 1855 to 1870. The, uh, I have a couple of volumes in the history of the Saturday Club. This was a former library copy. Uh, and it has all sorts of great, let me see if I can show you. All sorts of, this was a literary and social gathering, a whole bunch of, uh, of great literary pictures. Anybody, anybody recognize that? Can you make out the signature? You might have read his book. Uh, and then finally, a two volume set that is a classic example of what I always say on this channel that Steve is really hard on his books, <laughs> really, really hard on them. These are oversized things. This is a wonderful thing. I don't know of any other equivalent of this. This is a survey of all the portraits that Hans Holbein did uh, in full color and then accompanying the portraits, all the biographical information that we have for most of the sitters, all the best guesses and all that we know about them. Uh, it was done in two volumes. <laughs> this is volume two, and this <laughs> is volume one. And that's pretty bad. <laughs> it's the, it hasn't affected the inside of the book. The inside of the book is still incredible. You get all this text, and you get full-color reproductions of all of the portraits. It's just in really, really rough shape. <laughs> the exterior is in really rough shape. It's been chewed on many times. And not by me, I promise, but by guilty canines. Uh, not the canine who is choking in the background here. <laughs> she doesn't chew on things, except me. Uh, but others. <laughs> I've had others, and they, have, they were the malefactors here. And there you go. That is the bottom shelf. It's just a random bottom shelf of books here. I was down here looking for something. Of course, the thing I was looking for doesn't turn out to be down here, but we had a bookshelf tour anyway, so at least some good came of it. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up and pacify my little princess, who is going absolutely nuts because I'm over here. <laughs> but will she get up and come over here to be with me? No. <laughs> no. She would rather throw a fit over where she is. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over and pacify her and try to explain to her that the sound of rain torrentially hitting the windows means we can't go out. <laughs> it means we can't go outside. <sighs> My task is never done, <laughs> but I'll wrap this up for now and I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.